Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's KH93 Tech here, and today I have a review for the TouchCam N1 webcam from Face Vision. Now, I'd like to thank Face Vision, of course, for sending this out to me for review. They're very kind and very generous people, so go check them out. I'll be putting a link to their website down below right here, and also in the description below. So go ahead, whenever you want to, you can go click on that, and you can find out more about this webcam. First of all, I'd like to go over some of the actual physical things about this webcam, and first starts off with just how it looks and the materials. The front panel of this, this black part here, is made of carbon fiber, so the texture, you can't really see it from the quality of the webcam that I'm currently using right now, which is the built-in eyesight camera. Uh, you can't tell, but there is carbon fiber texture on this, so it looks really nice and professional. Uh, the edge of this is obviously an aluminum. It matches you know, many of the aluminum type products that Apple has, including the aluminum iMac and you buy a MacBook Pros and other um, things that they sell. There is this two-point stand on the back here so you can have it in many different positions. You can have it clipped on the back of a laptop like this sort of if you picture my hand as the laptop screen. You can also set it on a desk, have it pointing up at you like that if you wish, probably not that extreme of an angle, but you can have it sitting on a table pointing up at you. Again, it's very flexible in terms of the actual physical things. There's also um, padding on the bottom and the top side of this base here. So when you do uh, set this up wherever you set it up, whether it be on a table or on the top of a monitor or on a laptop screen, it will not scratch whatever computer or surface that you're using it on. So that's always nice. So now we're going to get into some of the tech specs of the TouchCam N1 because I know you guys are tech people. You're going to want to pay close attention to this part. Uh, first of all, this webcam was supposedly the first webcam that allowed 720p HD video calls over Skype. Now, depending on what platform you use, Mac or PC, that will vary for you. Since I'm a Mac, I've tried it out on uh, Skype for Mac, and I will say that the quality over Skype is pretty good. Now, uh, the downside is that it's not actually 720p HD video. I looked on, I looked and read up on this, and according to the forum boards that um, are talking about this product. Uh, currently the Mac OS does not allow access to the 720p video that this uh, camera puts out. Now if you're on a Windows computer or just a PC in general, uh, this webcam does come with CDs and they do have a patch on it that you can run and then it'll patch over this, your current Skype program and then that will allow access to 720p HD video over Skype. So depending on what platform you're on, that's how it stands for the HD video over Skype. Now another tech spec that uh, is pretty important is the angle. This is a wide angle lens, 78 degrees, so it does get a bigger shot. Uh, currently right now the iSight camera is not really a, a wide screen, or not wide screen, a wide angle lens as you can tell. Not much of the frame, not much of you know my room is being shot in this frame here, it's a very limited space. So the 78 degree wide angle lens is a pretty nice addition to this webcam. Also, uh, this webcam features autofocus. Now you guys might find that annoying, you might find it cool. Now here's the thing, I do like autofocus mainly because the iSight camera, which I'm using right now, ha is fixed focus and I've been using that for a while and it does pretty good, but once you get to moving around when you want to show people some things up close, maybe it does a very, very poor job. Now, of course, this autofocus fixes that problem. You can get really close, and it'll, it'll autofocus to that uh, specific distance, and what, however distance away, it will focus. However, if I'm sitting right here right now, and then if I had this webcam installed, as you'll probably see in my sample videos, it will autofocus even though nothing's really moving back and forth. There's nothing really to focus on. Uh, currently, right now, I am sitting at pretty much the optimal distance away from the iSight camera, which is about two feet, if I remember correctly. And so I'm giving this trying the best shot at the best quality possible so that when I uh, give video samples of this it will uh, you guys will see the difference in quality now as I slipped up before when I said this webcam does shoot in widescreen resolution 16 by 9 the uh, iSight camera shoots in 4 by 3 which is wide full screen resolution and that's kind of older uh, more and more these days videos are becoming widescreen so this is uh, prepared for that futuristic 16 by 90 ah, 16 by 9 widescreen resolution also on the front of this uh, webcam as you can t as you can see here there are two slits one on each side of 
the lens. And these are dual microphones. They're unidirectional, and that gives a better sound uh, depth, I guess, and better sound direction, and just better sound perception overall. Um, also, there's an LED indicator on the right side of the lens, so you know when it's working. It glows a bluish white color. Uh, as you know, the iSight camera has a green light that is currently on right now while I'm using it. And so it just lets you know when the camera is actually working, when it's on and in, in use. Uh, the last thing that I find pretty important to mention is the frame rate of this uh, webcam. When you shoot in normal, um, standard uh, definition video, it will uh, record in the expected 30 frames per second. However, if you're trying to uh, milk this for all it's worth and try to record an HD quality video, aka uh, 1280 by 720, then the frame rate will drop to about 22 frames per second. And depending on how powerful your computer is, that will um, drop even lower. Uh, when I personally recorded this with uh, my laptop that I'm currently using right now, which is a 13-inch Unibuy MacBook Pro that um, is this current generation, uh, I, I did get some lag. It did appear to be lower than 22 frames per second when just recording. Now, of course, I could depend on you know the video card that I have in this laptop, but I read the tech specs and it does meet um, my computer does meet the tech specs and uh, require system requirements for this webcam to work. But uh, um, that's probably just the bare basics, not HD quality. So enough of the tech specs. I'm gonna move on to the pros and cons of this webcam right now. So just to go through the pros and cons of the Touchcam N1 really quickly, all the tech specs I listed before are pretty good with some exceptions, which I will run over a little bit later when I get to the cons. But for the most part, the tech specs I listed before and the things that they boast about this webcam are very good indeed and very good things about this. Also, the build quality is very nice. It's very sturdy. These hinges, hinges excuse me, don't feel like they're going to break anytime soon. You can bend it all you want. You know, It feels like it's well built for the price that they charge you for it. Um, also, the good thing is that it's a plug and play webcam. Uh, again, I said it's UVC, so you don't need any drivers of any sort. You just plug the USB cable into the uh, mini USB port in the back of the webcam, and then plug the other side of the USB cable into your computer, and then it'll just work with any webcam software that you have, whether it's Skype, iChat, or any other thing that might use a video webcam. So like I said before, when you do try to shoot in 720p HD video with the Touchcam N1, you are not able to shoot in the full 30 frames per second that you would probably want. It does drop to 22 frames per second or even lower if your computer does not meet the system requirements or is not capable of handling that type of graphics and that type of recording. Also, another con that I came across was that the autofocus on this is not uh, fantastic. There is still some things that could be worked out. For example, sometimes if I would record with this webcam, you'll probably see it in the sample video, but when I am trying to stay as still as I can and I'm talking, sometimes the camera will try to autofocus even though I'm not really moving back and forth all that much. And so in the middle of a video, sometimes you'll see that the frame will kind of jolt in and out a little bit. That's the camera trying to autofocus. Also, another thing about the autofocus that I did find kind of annoying, but not too uh, big of a thing to worry about is when you are trying to focus on something up close, maybe you're trying to show someone something on your iPod, or maybe you're trying to show them some text of something, then when you try to get up close, what happens is the camera's obviously, obviously trying to focus in on that object, but the thing is that that object will try to, well, not it won't try to, but it will naturally reflect the sound that comes from the camera. And autofocus, as you guys may or may not know, does produce a little bit of sound. And sometimes when I do try to re record something up close, like a close-up shot for example, then you will be able to hear the autofocus in the camera bouncing off the object or just internally inside the webcam. So that's kind of a downside if you're trying to shoot and talk at the same time, uh, especially when you're up close. Also, I don't like the fact that there's no lens cap, so this is kind of prone to scratching a little bit more. Also, oh, uh, you can see that the lens protrudes from the actual face of the webcam, so that just makes it even more prone to being scratched, considering that it's not flat or behind a pane of glass. Also, this webcam is a little bit bulky. I'm not sure. I did try to take this to school once, and it was a pain to fit into my laptop bag, uh, considering that it is is—it's just big, not really compared to the spherical webcams that you normally get, 
uh, like the Logitech Quick Cams, some of them, but it is kind of big and it does get a little bit of a pain to carry around. Now, if you're someone like me that just kind of stays at home and uses the webcam at home, then you should be fine. You shouldn't have to worry about that. You can just keep it on your desk and whenever you need to use it, just plug it in and use it. But if you travel, I would probably uh, not get this webcam considering that it is a little bit big unless you have room in your laptop bag to do that then go ahead and do that if you want also the last thing that I had to complain about this webcam is that the software on your computer at least on my computer doesn't recognize the camera all the time now this only happens uh, seldomly it doesn't happen very often maybe about two percent of the time that I try to plug this in the computer will not recognize it and basically when I'm trying to do a Skype call or something and then I try to video call someone, Skype will give me a warning saying your microphone is not connected or there is no camera connected to this computer, etc, etc. So sometimes you do have to fiddle around just unplugging and plugging the USB ports back in and various combinations of between the mini USB and the actual USB port on your computer. So that might get annoying for you. It doesn't happen often like I said, but when it does happen it does get a little bit annoying. It does take a little bit of time with fiddling around with it to get it to work. So that's it for the pros and cons. Now I'm going to actually get to the video testing of this webcam. If you guys follow me a lot on YouTube, you will, you will know how the quality looks and all the things I'm talking about. But for those of you that don't uh, watch my YouTube videos that often, this will give you a definite look at what the webcam uh, does and how it performs when it's recording in both standard definition and in uh, HD resolution. So I mounted the Face Vision Touchcam N1 on the top of my laptop's screen right above the iSight camera that I was using before. And the first thing that you guys will notice is that the shot is obviously wide angle. And so you can see this shelf over here to my right, which I guess would be maybe your left, um, that you weren't able to see before with the iSight camera and you're able to see more of that side of the room, again, that you couldn't see before. One thing that you guys will probably notice is the audio difference in sound and sound quality. Before I was using the integrated microphone on the top surface of the Unibody 13 inch MacBook Pro that I'm currently using to record this, but I switched over to the Face Vision Touchcam N1 microphones and you guys can obviously hear the difference. Now what do I think about it? Personally, I don't like the sound of the Touchcam N1. It just sounds like there's a filter over the camera microphones and just doesn't sound all that good for a camera that is $120 uh, retail. So that's something I don't like. I don't like the audio very much. If I can help it, I will try to use a different microphone that does sound better and clearer. Now for background noise, it does pick, out, pick up some background noise. You guys will probably hear it. I will try to not put uh, background noise reduction on this part of the video. I probably will in the HD section uh, just so you guys can hear the difference. Now speaking of the HD section, we are going to stop with the standard definition video, which is what you're seeing right now, and then you guys are going to see the HD video clip that I will film. Now please notice that the frame rate on this one is pretty smooth. You know, I'm going like this, my hands are nice and clear. When I do shoot in HD, you will see that stuff like my lips will lag when I'm talking, and if I move my hands, it will look really um, just not smooth. Also, if you guys haven't already, please try to uh, switch on the 720p HD, which will be located, I guess, right about here. So turn that on HD so you can see the difference in the quality of the video and also the audio, because audio is uh, affected by turning on that 720p HD video. So this is me shooting in full HD 720p video. And like I said before, you guys will notice that my lips are kind of lagging. It looks like I'm not really saying all the words. And someone like me who talks fast, generally their lips will look like they're not like in sync with what I'm saying. And also you guys can see by my hands, it does lag. So overall, I'm very satisfied with the webcam that Face Vision was so nice and generous to send out to me for review. And for that, I want to thank them for it. And I have to tell you guys one more thing, which is about the price of this webcam. It retails for $120 from Face Vision's website directly, or you can find it on Amazon for about $70 to $75. Uh, but again, I am very satisfied with this webcam, with the exception of those few quirks, which aren't really that annoying from time to time. But uh, I do like all the things I said before, all the tech specs and everything seem to match up with what Face Vision boasts in their videos and their uh, online website. So again, I want to thank you guys for watching this. I want to thank Face Vision again for sending this out to me for review. I want to apologize to them also for getting this review out pretty late considering that I've been swamped with a lot of work. I haven't had a lot of time to film this review. 
And so I want to thank you guys for watching. And remember to rate, comment, and subscribe for more tech videos, including unboxings and reviews in the future. See you guys later.